So the parts are finally in. Let's get ready to upgrade this engine. So what's going on guys? We are back in the garage and today the part has finally arrived, or I should say parts. This is gonna be the engine upgrade. It's not the biggest one. The biggest that you can do on a 150cc engine is about 61 millimeters. I couldn't find that part online. I thought I did and waited and waited and waited. And as a cautionary tale, sometimes these online sellers aren't as reputable. But I gave up, got my money back, and through Amazon, which is the first time I've ever ordered an uh, engine or engine replacement kind of kit from them, a big bore kit, it's a 58.4. So we're a little bit shy of the total horsepower we can get out of this engine, but it should be pretty close. And with some other aftermarket racing parts that I find online and you guys recommend, I'll throw them in, see how fast this thing can go, and <laughs> have some fun along the way. So this one is going to be oh actually 57.4 i was off even more so it's a little bit smaller three millimeters gonna make a little bit of difference but we'll get over it but it's definitely coming straight from china as you can see on the markings on the front and on the side it even it's written in chinese so let's get stuck into it first thing we need to do is get this thing disassembled get the new engine in and go from there so the first step for this project is getting the plastics off i need to get to the actual engine bay. So I'm just gonna start lifting out the seat first. Next I have some plastics right here and it's gonna be a Phillips head screwdriver on both sides. That's gonna take off this part of the shroud. This one seems a little buggered. So if you push it a little bit while you're twisting the screwdriver, you can get these out. Cause all it is is a metal screw into some plastic. It does have clips on them. The clips get worn out over time. Especially when this thing's been torn apart so many times. So I got this metal shroud off also, the plastic. And I'm thinking about removing this piece too, just because it's gonna make it easier to work on and I'll be able to, be able to get a better angle on the actual engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece off next. And this back seat is just held on with these hex bolts, one, two, three, right there. So I'm just gonna whiz them off with an impact cordless. And now this whole plastic piece can come right out. Now that the fuel line over here is disconnected, the vacuum over here is disconnected, and my air filter and throttle have been disconnected, the carburetor should be able to fall right out for the carburetor boot this is going to be a 10 and of course i'm going to use my impact wrench taking it off but installation you're going to want to do it by hand i'm just doing it with the impact to be quick and keep this project rolling and now this should just pop right out A little bit of coaxing. It's been a while since it's been off. There we go. Boot for the carburetor. Next comes these two screws right here into the plastic shroud and it will allow me to open it up almost like a book. And I should finally have access to the engine. And with all of these, I'm separating out the parts and I always keep the screws with the parts so I don't get them mixed up on reassembly. Now with all these screws out, this metal or this plastic shroud should be able to come right out. I said very careful with it. Don't want to damage anything. So I'm gonna knock these out. So now we're finally down to the engine disassembly. So first I'm going to move this little plastic gasket here. If it comes ripped, you can always get a replacement. Mine looks good. I'll reuse it. And next is going to be these two eight millimeter, eight millimeter bolts right there. Now I'm going to whiz them off on the disassembly 
but of course for assembly, everything's going to be hand tightened. I'm going in a crisscross pattern to make sure I loosen all this tension evenly. And that one seems to want to bugger. And since this one wants to be a pain with the angle, I'll go ahead and take it off by hand. Be very careful. I can see there's washers right here on top of each one. So those washers are going to be reinstalled on installation. With those off, I should be able to loosen this up and get this cam tower off. Wiggle it. and expose the cam. However, before I can get out the, the camshaft, uh, this uh, cam chain automatic tensioner, I need to get it off. So I'm going to loosen these up. And before I try and pull it out all the way, I'm going to loosen up the actual tension on it. Now I'm able to take out these two bolts and hopefully this comes right out afterwards. We got a little mallet here. Pop. There we go. And the chain tensioner came right out. And now this chain on the camshaft is loose. I should be able to pop it right out. I'm going to be careful with this chain. I don't want to get it lost within the engine because that would be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to set the cam aside. And I'm going to check. Everything looks good. So I'm able to pull off this head next. Same thing. Oh, as I do, I've just noticed I found my first couple dowels. So I had one on the bottom right and I have one on the bottom or the top left. So I'm gonna have to remember where these go. So on installation, they go back in the same spot. Everything looks good. Nothing's binding. Am I gonna have the clearance? Uh, I was hoping I would have clearance. And it just looks like I'm a, oh. I almost got it. This is hitting it against the plastic. I didn't want to take off the plastic and make more of a trouble, but it looks like I am stuck. So we're going to, have to take off this plastic piece and it's getting stuck right here. I'm just a millimeter short of clearance. So it looks like I'm going to take off this plastic piece to be able to get this head off and on without a problem. So more work. Here we come. Now with this plastic removed, which I should have done from the beginning, I was just trying to save time. I'm able to get to this piston. And all I need to do is take out this clamp right here and I'll be able to remove the piston from the arm. And the removal of this clip is super easy when you have a lot of room. Unfortunately, I'm not working with a lot, so. But it came out and that's all it is, is this little clip. And that's what's hanging on to the piston. So I'm able to get that one out. 
and I can come on the other side here and be able to push that dowel out. This is going to pull out. The dowel can pull right out here and the piston is free from the arm. And there we go. That is a disassembled engine. All I need to do is put the new parts in. And if we take a quick look over at all my pieces, all the bolts are together, except for that big plastic piece that was a pain in the butt. But I do have all the bolts here and I even labeled them because there was so many. So the back or the back, the front and the top, head gasket, rail, chain rail, piston, cylinder, head, automatic chain tensioner. Can't forget that one and the bolts in the back. Unfortunately, with the amount of time this took and how long the video is going to be, it's going to have to be part two when I put this all back together. But that's going to be posted right up here, so check out the link or click next because that's going to be right up. I'm not going to space them out, not going to do anything like that. Just break them up for the time link. So with that, as always, thank you very much for watching. Ride safe, drive safe, and please keep at least two wheels on the road.